in the chat I'm reading, so uh, someone named Iris said that they paid seven hundred dollars a year at the IVF clinic to store their embryos. Wow. And it took this person a while to get pregnant. Um, what happens? I haven't thought about this, but what happens when the state funds that? Do they own those embryos? <sighs> That's a great question. Like, because they do I don't they know reclaim if they'll, them? If they'll be do they reclaim yeah. them? But if you think about the the embryo. I've seen like videos of when they inject the sperm into the egg and you can see it, it'll go and then it'll just like, there's like a light mm -hmm. and it's like, oh shit, that's when like a spirit is made. Right. That's crazy. Right. There's a spirit in there and it's, it's a, uh, you know, they cook it for a couple of weeks or something like that mm -hmm. until it's good to go and, and plant. What are you doing with like thousands of spirits? Well, Some women will create, you know, dozens of eggs and the yeah. men will create millions of sperm. Well, I think they reclaim that. it. Go ahead, Shane. I think they reclaim it. I, I've I've thought that a lot of that uh, stuff, the like aborted fetus stuff from Planned Parenthood, we know that certain labs at certain universities, I think one was in Pennsylvania, they took they those things. Trouble? Yeah, and they were making like um, chimeras uh, mm -hmm. with these aborted. I think there's some of these like your, I think there are aborted fetuses out there that have been made that are probably living in a cage in some university lab that have ears growing all over its back. And, yep. uh, and they'll probably reclaim these embryos and do whatever. Make Wasn't there an issue where Planned Parenthood was selling uh, uh, organs and such on, on the black market? And yeah. it's like, well, that wasn't representative of Planned Parenthood. That was representative of, a, of an employee. But, but there's nothing new under the sun. I, I think when it comes to this whole like alien thing, we yes. talked about it a bunch of times. These things are not our technological homies from outer space, they are some product of the fallen and the Nephilim. And the agenda is the same thing. Their interests are in our genetics. Uh, L.A. Marzulli would call it the seed wars. Mm -hmm. You know, this idea that um, there's nothing new under the sun. The same thing that happened before the flood of Noah, where the offspring of the fallen uh, and human women were doing all kinds of things, creating chimeric uh beings it's where you get in our opinion the pantheon from let's say egypt you have a jackal or head cryptids. And it, yeah. or cryptids yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which by the way seem to be mostly cited around military bases go figure yeah, uh yeah very strange and so i think when it comes to this alien phenomenon there's a lot of different aspects to it some of it is reverse. governmental some of it is reverse engineered technology some of it doesn't even necessarily have to be reverse engineered technology they're always right. light years ahead of us with what they haven't shown the public and i think they could probably pass a lot of things off and probably do a lot and have us dismiss it as the ufo phenomena that being said i believe there is a tangible spiritual and physical aspect there are entities uh that are taking people and what are their interests their interests are always creating some sort of hybrid right. craze, right? The the, the black-eyed children, mm -hmm. uh, women having uh, mysterious pregnancies that then go missing mm -hmm. after they're confirmed in the doctor's office, uh, women then being abducted in the future and claiming to see children in their abduction experience that seem to somehow be their children, despite the fact that they're not the children that she has back at home. These are... there's you know, hundreds, if not thousands of those cases. And you could dismiss them as, as crazy people. But to me, it's like the patterns are too strong. It's there, the same thing time after time. There will be a future where people can have like vanity surgeries to make themselves look half like a, like a minotaur, you know, yes. like the head transplants are probably not that far away. Honestly, I saw, uh, a a a a uh, that video. Like a, yeah, like a sort of a CG rendition where it was like, this is how we would do it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, the, yeah, that company is interesting. That's that fake company that also did the uh, um, external womb video, I believe. Uh, they were talking about like wombs and a warehouse thing. But just because that's not real right now, at least as far as we know, doesn't mean that they're going to do that at some point down the road. I mean, the most, one of the richest guys in the world is planning on putting a chip in your brain. You know, right. and right now it's not for vanity. They say it's for, you know, helping paraplegics, helping the blind, helping the deaf. And that's hard to argue against. My problem is the future consequences of that, where it does become in vain. And people are like, I just kind of like, it's like the, uh, the, you know, not like designer babies. Now it's, you, you can redesign yourself. It's not just trans. It's like, we can well, just transhumanism. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's the you know, my other problem with that is a long time ago, uh, you can find videos from like the early 2000s. I don't know how old they would have been by that point, but it was like, look, we put a, a rudimentary microchip in this cat's brain. And all we do is stimulate the aggression 
uh, centers of the brain and the uh, the sword. Yeah, and you can what you could do is you can make them hyper aggressive. And this was at the time the only two things that you could do. You can make them hyper aggressive, or you can make them incredibly docile with just a simple electrical signal uh, to this microchip. So the idea that they wouldn't have the ability to access Neuralink and do whatever the hell they wanted to you, if you think that there's some validity right now to the idea that these shooters on SSRIs are actually some sort of MK Ultra victims or something of that nature, well, wait until you start getting them with uh, Neuralink in their head. And all they did right. was send a little electrical signal, and the guy went ape shit. So, I mean, you know... And now we're all speed to whoever the first one in line for that is. There's definitely a lot, a lot of people on SSRIs walking around, but they're also low dosing us on psychotropics that's coming out of the sky. Oh. In my opinion, yes. Here in my go. opinion, yes. Uh, it's in the water, dude. It, that means it's in the cloud. It's exa exactly, and I. That's why a lot of the, like the illusion stuff, I think works on a lot of people. I think a lot of us are, everyone, you can't avoid it. It's everywhere. As healthy as I try to eat and I try to get my meat from the farmer down the road and I steal eggs from Tim's Chicken City, you know, there's still like nothing you can do to avoid the poison that's in the ground and in the sky. From, and it's from everything. It's like they're, it's not just the stuff that they're putting there to harm you and disease you and make you dumb. It's also just the stuff that's been there forever. And that's, that is a, a tough thing to have to deal with in this world. And I keep seeing people, you know, a lot of pilots get angry when I bring up the fake clouds thing. Cause they'd be like, contrails are actually contrails and contrails evaporate. I'm like, contrails are a thing. I'm not saying yes. it's not, contrails are there. I'm saying there's also very long columns of diseased poison riddled clouds that they're putting up there yes. that are raining down on you. I'm telling you that I can walk out in the morning and see two X's across the sky, one next right. to another one. <laughs> and when I come back later on in the day, those will have expanded into full clouds and they'll be blotting out the sun for some reason. Right. But did you put the right glasses on? <laughs> That's what, that was the problem. I'm yes. trying to look out the window right now. See, so <laughs> The clouds are looking pretty fake out the window right now. Um, I need to get a cloud cam. Uh, oh, in the Lord. studio, okay. Because uh, I want to talk about the hologram clouds. You know, there's there's lots of clouds we should talk to. Dude, about. that's what you need. Inverted World Live needs a cloud cam. <laughs> yeah, you need do. to be able to go to the cloud cam <laughs> at least once an episode like, when it bullshit. starts and after the episode. <laughs> yeah. you go look look out look how much it expanded. Uh, yo, the time that it took. Tim Pool, if you can have a Chicken City camera, I can have a cloud cam. Okay. I'm going to talk to him about it. I'm going to write that note down. Cloud cam. Um, <laughs> it, it, the, the idea of the clouds, it's, it's super pertinent to what we're talking about, especially when you're talking biblically, because in the end days, they said it'll be like the times of Noah or the mm. days of Noah. Mm. And in the days of Noah, God was like, it's out of control. Like, I can't help you guys anymore. They have taken over everything. And I think right. when, he, when he says that or when, when he's saying that, like, things are just really bad. I think they're talking about GMO foods. I mm. think they're talking about vaccines or mm. whatever they were putting into people to, to genetically manipulate them and possibly it's just stuff in the sky. Right. Like the way the plant, the plants are growing differently because of how it's being rained on. Mm. So this is like barely even God's creation. And we're living in such a fallen world right now where I'm looking around and I'm like, yeah, dude. I don't know how you fix this. Right. It's so, you know, when I say we live in a simulation, I don't mean ones and zeros. I know I've told you guys this before, but for those who haven't heard, like, I don't believe we live in a zeros and ones simulation. I believe the engineers of the false reality made everyone think that we live in this uh, fake world when base reality, God's reality is still there. But then that, that's not just like a perception thing because it's also organic thing. When I was in New York looking out in my backyard one day, many years ago, I was just kind of nerding out on tree species and plants. And like all of them were invasive. They weren't even from here. So what I was looking at, it's not natural to that part of New York. It's not even natural to America. A lot of it's like from China, you, you name it. It's just, so I'm looking at a completely actual, it looks organic. But that's a simulation because it's none of that belongs here. It wound up here from like some crate, you know, on a ship that came, you know, to Ellis Island or something. Who knows? So they've been building uh, uh, this false world for hundreds of years or well, I would, since the fall of man. I, let's, let's say thousands. You know, like it's been going on. The, the bad people have been trying to manipulate your idea of the world and sever you from God since, since we left the garden. And, uh, and it's funny, even now thinking of the garden, thinking of the way the gardens look now, everything's 
fake. Everything. Uh, the way you perceive history, the way you perceive you know, yourself. Uh, people can be whatever they want. Uh, you, can, you can take certain pills that make you basically defeat death until the very end. We got people walk around like zombies. Yeah, it does seem like it's, it's the end times. But then I always think it's almost like it's always been the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And we're always inheriting the end of the world. And uh, it's just up, it, that's why I keep coming back. So it's just up to you to being like a light through the darkness um, for your kids, especially. That's I, true. It's, it, I think that too, it's like, it's really bad now, but it was probably really bad before. And we go through these phases. It's just now it feels kind of different. It's like, really, I mean, it's really bad now because we are actually questioning, like not, not we, but the world has made it okay to question the very nature of your existence and yes. is also promoting the death of the innocence of children. That is like, I mean, so you could, someone listening can be like, well, the, they've been sacrificing ch children forever. True. But like, we are kind of making it so we're sacrificing the kids, but keeping them alive, which is really bizarre. Uh, I, I do want to say, though, because it's like I know we've we've turned a corner. I sensed it in the past 10 minutes. It's like this became very black pilling. And that is not the message that I, I like to give people. I know mm. you guys don't like to give people that either. But no. it's like there is good news. The good news is you can have a family do your best to maintain the health and the education of your family. You can develop a connection yep. with the land that you live on and develop a relationship with God um you can detach from this because the truth of the matter is if you detach from the overwhelming fear porn propaganda machine the birds are chirping outside top has a beautiful they're property fake, they are fake well they're robots <laughs> true that true, true, clouds true. are beautiful fake. but they're fake yes the but sun, top can walk out it. Know, into, clip, his, no. into his yard and his bare feet put his feet in the grass watch his kids yeah. play and and you know go in and, and teach them about god and do something meaningful. This isn't, I, I don't like to black pill people. It's just like, mm -hmm. you have to realize that going back to what I said, I, I kind of believe culture is, is poison. Mm. I don't believe we've had a genuine culture that has not been co-opted and manufactured by an intelligence agency for a long time. Certainly not within our own life. It's like, you can have your own culture. You can, read the Bible. You can get closer to God. You yep. can nurture your family. You can raise your children. You can have a wonderful relationship with your wife and you can really detach from all of this shit. I'm not, I, you know, I don't think you can stop. What I will say is I don't think you can stop whatever this is. I don't think it's time yet. Mm -hmm. Whenever that time is in the story, because I do think that we are living out a story, I think we'll know. But for now, you know, it's really look inward. It's like, um, uh, Owen Benjamin says this, he's got this line of like, you know, During, it's the, every time you say Owen Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, every time you say, Owen, but, but he says like, it's about the Jew in your own heart, right? If you really think that the Jews are out there and they're pulling the strings and all this terrible stuff has happened, what about you? Right. What about your accountability? What about your decision to engage in the predatory loans and the, and the, you know, the, the faulty financial system? What about your decisions to turn on the pornography? What about your decisions to drink the alcohol? What about your decision to plug into the propaganda machine? What about your decision to eat the terrible food? If there really is all this apparatus that's encroaching upon you and trying to poison you this way, psychologically and that way, you know, uh, you know, health wise, what about your decision to partake in? It is all about your consent. You can choose to stop consenting to mm. all these bullshit systems and you could build something better for yourself. It's a little bit harder. You know, I was talking the other day on my show about how, you know, a terrible thing is happening. It's like the public school system does terrible things to your kid. The, the financial system demands that the two parents work oftentimes. And, you know, next thing you know, uh, because you as a husband have stopped trying, your wife has become disenchanted with you. Now there's a divorce on the table. Mm. Now your kid is being raised by a woman who is in work most of the time. Yep. All of a sudden the internet's raising him. He's trans. All this crazy shit is happening. And it's like, there's two different hards. You can choose that hard or you can work hard to be a good husband, a good wife, a good father, a good partner, a good member of your community. And you can build something instead of letting these systems that, yeah, they are at your doorstep. They want in, but when mm -hmm. they knock, you have to answer. Yep. <clears throat> I think a lot of people need to remember and embrace the idea of legacy and it, like 
shedding your own ego, like you're not going to live forever. A lot of people <clears throat> are so bought in, plugged into the idea of materialism uh, and down to their own body and they can change all these things and put the brain chip in and all this stuff. They can have their designer babies or whatever. Um, <clears throat> how they, they define their wealth by the things they own, their social media presence, but like nothing completes me more than just being with my kids, my family. Like it's like a real like I'm okay to die <laughs> like type feeling like I, I this is the work of art. You know, these kids are going to do the thing now and I'm so glad I got to meet them and nothing else matters. Uh, and that gives me a, an incredible peace. I, you know, I, I love that. And uh, I think this weird promotion of having no kids, it's really turned off progress in the good sense, like I was saying earlier, the idea of legacy. We don't build cool things. We don't make cool things. There's no room to even make a cool culture. You know, I think there could be a possibility for culture. Like, I think it could happen in small pockets, you know, growing up in like, uh, uh, in like uh, Hudson Valley, New York, and being part of like the hardcore punk scene and like the, the bands there, DIY, that was some of the most exciting times of my life. And we, those, those shows, like a good show for us is like, wow, 20 people were there or like a hundred. That was amazing. But like, it didn't matter how many people were there. It was like, we got to get together and just do our thing. And it was cool and it was fun. We were making something. And it seems like that idea of like, just making something for fun uh, is gone. And that's why I'm kind of like, I, oh, I'm over the idea of AI art. Uh, humor is lost. Humor is also lost. Uh, and it's, but I think it's going to come back. Like I, I also reject the black pill. I hope people don't t walk away with it thinking this is a black pill. I think it's good to understand the evil that's out there and really confront it because like, and I think I said this on your guys' show last time I was on uh, with my cardigan is like, I reject nihilism and uh, you have to just, you know, COVID was a blessing. COVID was incredible because it showed everyone like a lot, not everyone, but you know, a lot of people, this is what they're willing to do to you. And they're going to destroy you. They actually love destroying you. And like you guys were saying, they feed off of it. Um, it made me and my wife better parents. I think it woke us up to a lot of other stuff. I thought, you know, like I was into a lot of conspiracy stuff. Uh, like I thought I was in high school and college and stuff, but uh, you know, that was baby, <laughs> baby conspiracy stuff. I wasn't really plugged in at all. Um, but that, like, I think Raven, you said it earlier, like it confirmed COVID and lockdowns confirmed all the evil things I thought I knew about our system in place. Um, but now it's happening to me and I was a father and I had to confront it. And instead of doing things that my neighbors were, were doing in New York, which was like, uh, putting on the masks and, and, you know, getting the shots and not allowing my kid to play with my kid or all that stuff. I lost a lot of friends. I was like, nah, nah, we're going to live our life and still have hope and joy and love and, and move forward. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad. Um, but before we, before we go, uh, where can people find you guys? Where, where's Nephilim death squad and where are you guys on social media to give people more of this positivity? Um, well, before we get into that, I do want to say we are throwing an event uh in october right. october 25th through the 26th is the second uh happening of bohemian grove and it's a two day long conspiracy comedy and political event we're gonna have nephilim death squad tower gang leonardo joni revenge of the sis is coming jay dyer is coming Sick. uh josie the redheaded libertarian clint russell one of the one-on-one -on -one podcast chain it's it's a whole bunch of people it's going to be a blast we're doing uh live possibly me uh, yes possibly yes me. i hope you can make I'm, it i'm I really working hope on you it can make it if you can oh, God, it's awesome. but yeah that it's a crazy lineup uh i it's didn't know jay was there too event. that's sick jay's awesome yeah Yes, I love Jay Dyer. He's coming. He wants to do what's called a uh, cringe core. So he wants to do a musical number, which is hilarious. Uh, and so I hope that that happens. But like I said, two days of live podcast, stand up comedy and music. There's also gonna be merch and drinks and food and all kinds of stuff. So if you guys want tickets to that, it's October 25th through the 26th in Summerfield, Florida at the joke joint. Nephilim Death Squad presents Bohemian Grove. You got to go first to our Patreon, patreon.com backslash Nephilim Death Squad to gain early access to the tickets. It's a small venue, so it's going to sell out fast. We want our patrons to have first access to it. Uh, so Nephilim Death Squad, I'm sorry, patreon.com backslash Nephilim Death Squad. And you, Other than that, you guys, real quick, before you do that, uh, you guys put out a video of the last one. 
that Tripoli had. That video is amazing. Yeah, uh, it was so yeah. much, dude. It was wow. Fun. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. It was insane that the first one was headlined by uh, uh, Sam Tripoli. Shout out to Sam. I love Sam Tripoli. He's, yep. he's one of the realest dudes. Did but... you guys bring Sam and Owen together yet? <clears throat> no. They're... Can we work on that? I don't know. I'd like to work on that. I know that was a lot of beef, but I, I, I hate seeing everyone fight. I don't like it. I wish they, it they do this. They do this like every two years. We're do that. We're gonna figure it out. I hope so. I hope if anyone can do it, it'd be you guys. Um, but you can find Nephilim Death Squad on Rumble and YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We prefer Rumble though. It's the free speech platform. Also, uh, find us on Nephilim D Squad on Twitter and uh, Instagram, and you can find me at David L Corbo on Twitter. Sick. You can find me. Actually, you know what? I wanted to just address something. You were talking about the concept again of the Garden of Eden. I feel like that's the name of this episode mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. The Garden of Eden is the idea of uh, time preference. And I, this seems to come up all the time now. You can be like gods right now. You can have your designer baby. You can have your plastic surgery. You can do whatever you want. That's right here for you. Or you can barter and choose eternity because that's what the Garden of Eden is. And when you have kids, when you cultivate your own land when you do anything that's growing or creating you're choosing eternity you're planting a seed that's why mm. that's why i love the creative so much i know that you love creative mm -hmm. people too because yep. they're putting something there that will last longer than them they're building a statue it's just beautiful that thing will be seen for years yep. or even building something that they will never see finished you know so that's that i think that's the end of this the the message of this show it's like choose eternity and for mm. us that means that means jesus christ yeah. god and jesus christ I, you know, I hope people go look at it. I'm not trying to push people the wrong way yep. or whatever, you know, people get offended, but that's what it is for me. Same. So you'd be black pilled or you could Dude, choose eternity. Well but, uh, put, well put. I love it. Uh, yeah. My name's top lobster. <laughs> you could <laughs> buy me top at top lobster.com. You could buy racist t-shirts. I do another racist show called tower gang where uh we talk about i mean if you've never heard of endless shrimp and that phenomenon that's like a <laughs> racism slash economics you go i mean you name it man we were talking what, about it on there nephilim death squad of course what time what time and day can people watch tower gang 9 11 p.m est that's right. every wednesday that's right. baby boy we're there that's right we're gonna be doing some wild stuff um but yeah, that's that's all my plugs, man. I hope you follow me, especially on Twitter. That's where I want to talk to you at. I don't care about this other stuff. Talk to me on Twitter. Please, everyone listening, if you don't already, I, I suspect many do, follow these guys, watch their show. It's, it's incredible. I've been on it, I think, twice. Um, yes. And it's always a blast. And thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks for having thank us, you, Shane. Yep. Peace, guys. Amazing. It's great. good to be back. Yeah, it's great. They were great. I love having them back. Um, anything with you going on crazy? You got no, any I, ghosts I, you got to clear out? Any, <laughs> any weird visitations we should... Uh... No, I like what these guys are saying. At the same time, I just feel like I'm in the camp of everyone need, just needs to make the best decision for themselves. Yeah. If you want to have a baby in the hospital, do it. Yeah. You don't want to have a baby, oh, yeah. don't do it. Yeah, especially like if you're like high risk stuff for sure. You know, like I'm not gonna judge on that. Just don't don't do the things that are evil. Well, there's a lot of don't evil. do those evil and, things. But you have all the information at your hands. Yeah. So. You would hope people actually read it though. That's true. And if they don't then that's that's no it's one's crazy. problem but their own. It's crazy. That was a good PSA though. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> on the way here I almost hit a vulture. You did? Yeah, it was crazy. There's always something. It was. I thought that was like a weird omen. I get scared omen. driving here. I always think yeah. like the worst things. I was worried that that meant something was going to go like so, terribly wrong. Yeah. Did the show actually go out? Oh, it's, <laughs> oh, it's they not there. No, it's amazing. Um, never <laughs> well, uh, it's good to be back, and I'm glad yes. we're glad we're here. Where Definitely. can people find you? Um, I am Alex Ayala on Twitter, but I think Twitter is evil, what? so it's, uh -uh. it's part of the problem. So no anyway, way. you can find me there, but you're not really going to find me there. <laughs> yeah, you're there like sparsely. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys for joining us. We will be back next Sunday. Can't wait. You can find me at Shane Cashman everywhere. And uh, if you have stories you want to tell, we had someone tonight who we had to reschedule last minute, which is a bummer because this person's got some pretty wild stories. So I wasn't able to get anyone else in their place uh, so last minute. But if you do want to tell us stories and call in, um, you can send me those ideas at Shane Cashman at scanner.com, S-C-N-R.com. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.